High Adventure. Tonight we tell you the story of The One Man Boarding Party by Ron Evans. Cape Town in the year 1781. Britain was at war with the Netherlands, and the town's small garrison stood to arms, ready to fend off any attempt from the British fleet to invade. The defenders, all employees of the Dutch East India Company, consisted mainly of Swiss, French, and German mercenaries. And strangely enough, the commander of the garrison was an English ex-army officer, Colonel Gordon. He was an efficient man, and his allegiance lay with his employers, rather than his homeland. With a will, he set about preparing the defences. These included a battery overlooking the main berth in the harbour, which was put under the direct command of Captain Starring, the port captain. Shortly after the cannon had been installed, the captain was hurriedly summoned to it by the officer in charge of the battery. Ah, Good morning, Lieutenant. Morning, sir. What seems to be the trouble? It's that brig out there, sir. She's flying a Danish flag, but refuses to answer our signal. Uh, give me your glass, please. Thank you. Uh, yes, she's a Dane, all right. But why doesn't she attempt to come into the harbor, I wonder? I was surprised when I first saw her at dawn. Must have sailed into the bay without lights. Mm, which is very suspicious. They could be spying for the British. Should I just keep a watch on her and report everything that happens, sir? Mm, yes, it would be as well. She's right under your gun and well within range. Obviously, they haven't spotted this battery yet. Oh, here's Colonel Gordon. Good. Let us see what he thinks of it. Good morning, gentlemen. I see you're taking an interest in our strange visitor. We were wondering if she could be spying for the... British, are you trying to say, Starring? Don't worry about my nationality. It's so long since I've been to England that it doesn't mean much anymore. Yes, I think your guess is right. We've had reports from two fishermen that the Dane put off two heavily laden whale boats under cover of darkness. And it's my guess they were filled with arms for the settlers. For the settlers, sir? Have their ill feelings towards the company become that strong? I'm afraid so, Starring. It's a situation I have to watch very closely in case we get a British invasion in front of us and a rebellion behind us. I knew they were grumbling. I didn't realize it was that bad. Well, it is. And I'm afraid that Governor von Plettenberg has awakened to it a, a year too late. Mm. However, that doesn't solve the problem of why that Dane is anchored out there. What about a boarding party of soldiers, Colonel? No, it may scare them off. I'd much rather have her in the harbor, but I'm afraid there's little chance of that. I suggest you keep a close watch on her during the day. And tonight I'll have the shore patrolled in, in case more boats are sent off. Very good, Colonel. I'll ride up later today and see you. Excuse me, Captain. Yeah? I was thinking that perhaps a couple of shots through her rigging might induce her into the harbor. Mm. No, Lieutenant. But what you say has given me an idea. Yes, by heaven, I'll do it. Do what, sir? Go aboard myself, all alone and unarmed. If you'll forgive my saying so, sir, I think it would be suicide. <laughs> don't discourage me, Lieutenant. If I don't go, you'll have to spend the rest of the day with a telescope to your eye. What purpose could your visit achieve? I'm not sure. But as Colonel Gordon says, it would be nice to get her into the harbor. What I want you to do is watch me very closely when I board. If I wave my hat, open fire. The first two shots over her rigging. After that, cause as much damage as you can. Sink her, if need be. But what about you, sir? When I wave my hat a second time, you may cease fire. Is that clear? Uh, quite clear, Excellent, sir. Excellent, but... Lieutenant. I'll go now and put my trust in God. And your ability as a marksman. Good shooting. He wants to commit suicide. I'm sure of it. And we'll have to be his executioner. Take a look, Captain. There's a boat pulling 
out from the harbor entrance. How many men in it? Uh, uh, four? Uh, no, no uh, five. Arm six men and have them covered when they come alongside. Five of these stupid holders cannot do us much harm. What if they're armed? Fire on them before they can board us. Then we'll up anchor and make another rendezvous with the settlers farther down the coast. Oh, I'll be glad when we get rid of this cargo. Oh, I complain, Larson. The British have paid us well for delivering it. <laughs> You'll feel different when you're spending your money in Copenhagen, huh? I hope it's very, very soon. They're very close now. Shall I hail them? No, I'll do it. Ship your oars and drift in. Hi there! What do you want? Port Captain, I want to board and talk to you. We don't want to talk to you. I must insist. There's no point. We have no intention of coming into the harbor. My ship is out of your jurisdiction. The whole of Table Bay is my jurisdiction. Return to the harbor and stand by there to pick me up later. Aye, aye, sir. You board my ship at your own peril. I'm boarding you nevertheless. <sighs> You're a brave man, whoever you are. I'm... I'm doing my duty, that's all. I say you've sent your boat back to shore. Are you intending to stay? Only for as long as it takes me to search your ship, Captain. And kindly tell your crew not to point those weapons at me. I do not think you quite realize the difficult position you are in. I have no intention of letting you search. Why should I? As port captain, I have the right. But what will you be looking for? I've reason to believe you're carrying contraband for the British. At least two boatloads were landed last night under cover of darkness. So they have been watching us, Captain. Be silent, Larson. So my suspicion was correct. Captain, I must order you to put into the harbor. You order, little man? You order? Huh. You seem to have a strange idea of what authority you wield. A whisper from me to the crew. And they'll gladly hang you from the yard down. Isn't that right, man? <laughs> I won't do that. Yet. You can come with us to our next port. Borny in the Gulf of Guinea. Now that your people are sure know why we're here, there's no point in our staying. You can't hold me against my will. I can, and I am. If this ship leaves without proper clearance, the shore batteries will open fire and sink you. Oh, what shore batteries? Larson! Fred Anchor... You think I'm bluffing? Think, little man. I know you are. Very well. Watch this. Oh, you stupid Hollander. What are you waving your hat like that for? Carry on, Larson. They have got batteries. Cost them. Get your men on the windlass, Larson. The next shots will be in your hull, Captain. I doubt it. Not while you're on board. I see the smoke, Captain. And there are at least two guns up there on the hill. Go. Oh, of fools. Very well, Mr. Captain. Let's see how long you carry on this bluff. Seize him! Tie his hands behind him! Ah. <laughs> Captain, holding me as a hostage will do you no good. Only a signal from me will stop them firing on you. Signal then, curse you. Call out your boat, and I'll let you go free. I'm sorry, Captain. First, you must surrender yourself and this ship to me. One of the first direct hits on the brig damaged the windlass and killed two men who were trying to hoist the anchor. Another ball hit the shoe of the foremast and tumbled it down onto the deck, killing another seaman. And then chaos and panic reigned on board amongst the crew. Inflamed, the men demanded that Captain Starring be hanged as a reprisal. But still the gallant man stood his ground and refused to give the signal that would stop the bombardment. Ashore, hearing the cannons, Colonel Gordon galloped up the hill to the battery. for 
the Dane to be bombarded. Captain Starring, sir. It's close disobedience of my orders. Where is he? On board the ship, sir. He, he's where? On board the Dane, sir. <clears throat> Let me get this correct. He's on board that ship and you've opened fire on it. Does that make sense? He went on board to talk to the Danish captain and instructed me to open fire when he waved his hat. When he waves it again, I'm to cease fire. The man's taken leave of his senses. Did he tell you why he was going to board her? Well, it wasn't very clear, sir. But he said he wanted to try and bring them into the harbor. Instead, he's given you orders to blow him to pieces. We're taking very careful aim, sir. Well away from where he's being held prisoner. And my plan is to damage her so badly she'll be unable to leave. Holding Starring a prisoner, you say? Yes, sir. Sergeant Jarring and I are keeping a close watch. He's tied up on the poop, as you'll see if you look through my glass, sir. Hmm. Yes, I... I see him. He looks quite indifferent to, to all the frenzied activity going on around him. He's not a very excitable man, sir. That's obvious. As long as the ship can't move, we merely have to keep our aim and pound away. I don't know whether to countermand Starring's orders or, or to let you carry on, Lieutenant. It's a mad idea, and I don't think it'll work. The brig has cannon of her own, too. They can't elevate their aim to our position, though, sir. And their range is too great for them to bombard the town. But if I were to take out a boarding party of soldiers... The Danes could blow you out of the water long before you reach them. That, I think, is the reason Captain Starring went out in a small boat, so as not to alarm them. It's a difficult decision, Lieutenant. Uh, what do you think? With the situation the way it is, sir, I feel that we must keep firing. If Captain Starring wanted me to stop, he'd signal. Yes, you're right, of course. Well, if he's happy about it, I'll accept the situation. Well, I'd uh, better go and report to the governor. Then I'll get a detachment to man a boat in case the Danes sinks before surrendering. Starring. Not that knowing it will do you much good. I need to put your name in my log for when I hang you. But if you're going to hang me, you'd better do it soon. You know only the mainmast. We've managed to get the anchor off the boat. Good. Get some men aloft. And while they're unfurling the mainsail, get one to drop a noose down. Oh, we're going to hang the Dutchman. That's right, Larson. And hurry, man. We're starting to drift in short. A boatswain, get yourself and five others and ask them. So you'll commit murder in addition to your other crimes, Captain. You and your cursed battery have killed eight of my crew already. I call that murder. All you have to do is surrender to me to stop further slaughter. Never, you fool. We'll soon be sailing out of range. Your ship is badly damaged. One storm and she'll sink. That's a risk well take, Starring. Here's the rope coming down, Captain. Come with me, Starring. Say whether you prefer to give the signal or hang. Hanson, story! Bring the prisoner to the mainmast. Drop down his around his neck, Larson. A pleasure, Captain. Maybe your friends ashore can say this. Might make them change their minds about shooting at us, eh? I don't think so. We'll give them time to make up their minds. Larson? Put the rope under his armpits. But, Captain, he was... Do as I tell you. <laughs> what is this for? I'm going to let you dangle from the mainmast for a while. We'll say if your gunners up there can say how helpless you are. Hey, boy, man! Oh. Oh. No higher than that! All right. Are you comfortable about there, starting? No less than you, Captain. Curse the man's eyes. Does nothing perturb him? One direct hit on the mainmast and he's dead, Captain. One direct hit on the mainmast, Larson. And we're finished, too. Having only one mast, the brig was very difficult to steer. Very slowly, she turned about to present only her stern to the gunners. She slowly moved forward at less than a knot. It would take a long time for her to get out of range. Aim lower. Try to hit her on the waterline. It was a severe test of accuracy for the gunners, one which they passed with high honors. Suspended high above the deck, Captain Starring engaged in bantering the crew. 
and in spite of their hate for him, even the hardest men secretly nursed an admiration for his courage and audacity. Where are you going to sail to when your poop is on the way? Ahead of you is Lorban Strand. Some big rocks waiting there for you. Listen to him there, Captain. Let me show that him. No, don't, you fool. Put down your pistol, Larson. He's up there. Be the man. Be quiet. Listen. Those guns are so high. It's going to take us two hours to get out of their range. Do you realize that? The ship won't take another hour of this punishment, Captain. The stern shattered in a dozen places. And I can say nothing is going to stop them firing on us. Unless he signals them to stop. Which means we have to surrender. Oh, you can't do that, Captain. It, it, it's There's not... no alternative, Larson. We can scar them. Then, then they can't prove we're carrying contraband. That man starring knows. He can drown when the ship sinks. Then we'll be charged with murder, which is worse. Besides... I'm not very well sure why we came here. It's more than likely that they intercepted those two boatloads of arms we landed last night. What are we going to do? Still risk making a run for it? We've one last hope. Come with me. What will you do if one of those balls hits the gunpowder you're carrying? Poof! When we're all dead. Hey, Stalin! Listen to me. If you signal them to stop firing, I'll let you go free. My word on it. You made that offer earlier. Sorry, Captain. I like it up here. You're a mad, crazy Dutchman. I should have left that rope around your neck. I uh, made it worse for yourself. Oh. Lower him down, Larson. Be quick about it. Eric, Jarvis, give me a hand here. The rope jerkily lowered Captain Starring to the deck. He grinned at his captor and at the angry yet anxious faces of the crew who had gathered round to stare at him. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Captain. Uh, you know, it's a lot warmer down here. It will be a lot warmer in Hades, which is where I'm going to send you if you don't signal those guns to stop firing. I've told you my turn. They are unreasonable. Larson, hand me your pistol. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. A lot quicker than the rope. You're tempting me, Starin. I'm not afraid. If I die, you'll all die, too. Either by drowning or hanging. And I think you all know it. Uh, he's right, Captain. The ship's too badly damaged to take into the open sea. I didn't ask for your view, Larson. Untie his hands. Come on, make it lively there. Is this an indication that you're surrendering, Captain? No, it is not. Perhaps I'm just going to throw you over the side. Oh, I'm a bad swimmer. I hope so. Uh, oh, that's better. That twine was quite painful. I wish I could understand you, Starling. What makes that smile stay on your face? Is that your normal expression? I always smile when I'm enjoying myself. Don't you? How can you be enjoying yourself, man? Surely you realize how close to death you are. No. How close to victory I am. No! Oh, this is too much! I won't stand for it! Look out! Oh, 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 man must go. Daddy! Daddy, where are you? Over here. Come here! Before I shoot. I'll accept your surrender now, Captain. Oh, will you indeed? You're mad. You're mad, man! The ship isn't going to go very far now. Not without a mask. Captain, it's getting too bad. The men are getting ugly. Mutiny? Is that what you're suggesting, Larson? No, no, not me, sir. It's the men. They're saying they're only risking their necks just to save your oh, Which is right, of course. Cowards. Cowards. That's what they are. Cowards. A sensible crew you have, Captain. Silence, Starling. I think you stand a better chance of being thrown over the side than I do. He's right, Captain. Oh, curse you, Larson. Whose side are you on? The one that doesn't get me killed. Oh. Very well, Larson. Assemble your fellow mutineers on the poop. I'll talk to you all later. But they might not take your order, Captain. Now that you're one of them, I expect they'll elect you as leader. And you can order them onto the Pope. Am I correct? Well, yes, Captain. Uh, what now? Do we just drift onto the rocks? I wish you wouldn't grin at me like that, Starling. It makes my next move so very, very difficult. I'm sorry, Captain. I can't help it. Here, take that cursed pistol. And hurry up and signal the ceasefire. Unconditional surrender. Do I have a choice? No. Hurry up, then. 
And when you finish waving that hat, come down below with me and have a drink. I need one badly. The gunners on the battery cheered when they saw Starring's victorious signal. Colonel Gordon, with a boatload of soldiers, put out from the harbour and boarded the Danish brig. Late that afternoon, she was kedged into Cape Town Harbour, badly listing and barely able to float. To your everlasting health, Starring. If we had a medal to give, no one would deserve it more than you. But we haven't. Thank you, Colonel. Governor von Flettenberg wants to see you later. Oh, dear. I'd rather face my own bombardment again than that. Every time he sees me, I get a long lecture on some fault he's either found or invented. <laughs> Not this time, my friend. This time he's so proud of you that he's naming the gun emplacement after you. Starring's battery. How's that? I'm honored, Colonel. I don't know what to say. Just drink, Starring. Then I think... We'd better prepare ourselves for a possible invasion by the British Navy. Well, we're ill-prepared for that. But we'll do our best, I'm sure. True, Starring, true. We'll drink to that. And to my problem, the one I'll have when they land. It makes me a traitor to the Crown, you know. If we're strong enough, they may not land. Oh, they'll land. And I don't doubt the settlers will help them round us up. We're far too weak to make a good long fight of it. Pity... Because the bay has the makings of an almost invulnerable stronghold. If we only had the guns and men. Oh, well, we can only blame the meanness of the company for their lack of foresight in supplying them. Yeah. Don't worry about that now, though. We've still time to enjoy ourselves before the British come. Let's hope Starring's battery puts on a first-class show. It will. I promise you. With just 50 men like you, Starring... I'd be content to take on the entire British Navy. Thank you, Colonel. Well, Starring, straighten your hat, put a smile on your face, <laughs> and let us go and see Governor von Plettenberg now. Can't keep him waiting, you know. He considers lateness a sign of contempt for his authority. Can't have that, can we? <laughs> I wonder what he'll find to lecture me about this time. Probably something about my not being properly dressed when I boarded the Danish ship. <laughs> Captain Starring's bravery in thwarting the gun-running Dane goes down in history as one of the most courageous acts of gallantry in the defense of our country. And rightly so. This story is based entirely on fact, and the event dramatized actually happened in the Cape Town of 1781. Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.